Mercedes-Benz wants to get as much use as possible out of its bespoke all-electric EVA2 architecture that debuted last year under the EQS sedan. Shortly thereafter came the EQE sedan and the crossover-shaped EQS SUV. And if you follow those breadcrumbs, you'll inevitably be led here to the 2024 Mercedes-Benz EQE SUV, which coincidentally will be the first electrified SUV in Mercedes lineup to receive an AMG variant. More on that later. For more on the EQE SUV and all the other very cool EVs coming down the pike, please be sure to subscribe to the Inside EVs YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media. But for now, while we're here, let's focus on this vehicle right here. Now, if you've ever seen pictures of the EQS SUV and the EQE sedan, it's not hard to understand where they drew the inspiration for the EQE SUV. For example, there's still a big, beautiful gloss black grille panel up front, and there's an optional Mercedes star relief that appears behind the gloss black. We saw that on the EQS SUV. I absolutely love it. It's a great way of helping this car stand out a little bit. From there, the grille panel bleeds into these two element LED headlights. It's got two elements because this is an E family car as opposed to the three elements of an S family car, EQS, EQS SUV, S class, etc., etc. However, things do diverge ever so slightly from the EQE sedan, starting right here. Unlike that car which has a one bow shape where the A pillar bleeds down into the front wheel well, this car instead has a slightly more formal hood line that then kind of generates into a big tall greenhouse like you might expect on a conventional SUV. The body sides are very smooth on this car and it looks very sensual and organic with one exception. There is a little character line that generates right in the middle of the rear door and kind of creates a good crisp shoulder line that then goes around into the taillights. Now, one bummer I have to note about this particular car, these fantastic fan-shaped 22-inch wheels are not coming to the United States. Unfortunately, we will have standard 19-inch wheels ranging up to optional 21-inchers. My absolute favorite feature of any EQ family of vehicles is this double helix taillight design. I think it looks great, and if you press designers, they will admit that this was actually inspired by the coils of an original Edison light bulb. It's kind of a fun way of thinking about how far electricity has come in our lives, from merely lighting our homes to becoming the vehicle that takes us across country. Also on this vehicle, it has uh, the standard Mercedes EQ light bar on the rear, but there is one kind of interesting thing to note back here. The hatch blends perfectly into the bumper. There isn't a bumper step like you might find on the EQS or the EQS SUV. That kind of gives it a planted and secure stance. Now this car is about three inches shorter in wheelbase than the EQE sedan, and it has shorter front and rear overhangs too. That would normally spell disaster for aerodynamics, but they have done a few cool tricks to make sure that this glides through the air with a targeted 0.26 coefficient of drag. Inside, we've come to expect certain things from the Mercedes EQ brand, and they all show up here on the EQE SUV. A standard 12.8-inch center display and 12.3-inch instrument cluster are all very intuitive and they feel very familiar from other Mercedes products. But if you really want to get into high-tech territory, the MBUX hyperscreen appears as an option, which replaces the 12.8-inch center display with the 17.7-inch unit and adds a third 12.3-inch screen for the front passenger. Like some other Mercedes EQ products, the EQE SUV is capable of a peak charge rate of 170 kilowatts. That means a 10 to 80% DC fast charge happens in a relatively speedy 32 minutes. Good for a quick bathroom break and a cup of coffee before continuing your journey. Those with a 240 volt wall box at home can replenish the battery from 10% in 9.5 hours. Good for nighttime off-peak charging. The EQE SUV's higher roof line and stance pay huge dividends in terms of passenger comfort. While the EQE sedan can kind of feel a little bit claustrophobic and tight, particularly for rear seat passengers, the SUV's higher seating position compensates for that high floor. As you can see, I've got plenty of space, in spite of the fact that this seat is set up for someone a little bit taller than me. I'm six feet tall, and I still have tons of room. Now behind these rear seats, there's between 18.4 and 20.0 cubic feet of cargo room, depending on the adjustable seat back angle. Fold them down and you're left with 59 cubic feet. And it must be said that those numbers all trail the Tesla Model Y, BMW iX, and Audi e-tron. So be sure to try it before you buy it if your hobbies or your job often require you to carry a lot of cargo. Now, if you've stayed with me this long, let me reward you with this, the Mercedes AMG EQE SUV. This vehicle is obviously a much sportier version of the EQE SUV, and that starts with its appearance. Up front, we have these beautiful vertical grille strakes like you'd see on any other AMG product, and as we saw for the first time on the C63 AMG, and a Falterbach badge replaces the traditional Mercedes laurel wreath. It's kind of a cool callback to the car's original parentage based in a Falterbach, Germany, so love to see stuff like that. 
However, we're not here to talk a whole lot about the styling. Let's get into what makes this thing special. With 677 horsepower and 737 pound-feet of torque available from these upsized front and rear motors, this is going to be an absolute screamer. AMG estimates that this car will accelerate from 0 to 60 in 3.4 seconds, making it the fastest electrified AMG ever built. Now that power comes by way of the optional AMG Dynamic Plus package. If you order the standard car without that package, you're left with only 617 horsepower. Still plenty to get you where you want to go. This car will also max out at 149 miles an hour, which, as you know, is pretty darn quick. These cars generally aren't built to go really fast in a straight line, but this one obliges. Now let's walk around and I'll show you some of the other features that distinguish the AMG EQE from the lesser standard model. First of all, we've got standard 21-inch wheels on this car with optional 22s. If you get the 21s, you get uh, kind of more efficiency-minded tires, whereas the 22s come standard with Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. You will pay a slight range penalty, about 10%, if you go for the stickier tire, but I think it'll be worth it given the way this thing should handle. There's also an optional braking package that replaces the standard steel brakes with carbon ceramic front rotors. However, six piston and calipers are standard no matter which braking option you pick, as are steel rear brakes. Whereas the standard EQE get steel springs with airmatic available as an option, this car comes with air suspenders right out of the box, with a performance tune that befits its mission. Additionally, there are adaptive dampers that are inspired by those of the AMG GT four-door coupe, just one of the ways that they've kind of helped create a solid lineage between this car and other vehicles in the AMG lineup. Most importantly, the AMG EQE comes standard with 48-volt dynamic roll bars. This is a feature that's kind of been missing from the rest of the EQ lineup, and they are big heavy vehicles that really benefit from some increased ride control. So I'm really excited to take this thing down a curvy road and see if it's just as agile as I expect it would be given that adaptive suspension. I'm really excited to drive this, if you can't tell. It's gonna be a whole lot of fun. EPA range estimates aren't yet available, but the EQE SUV is WLTP rated to travel 342 miles on a charge in its most efficient single motor layout. As such, we won't be surprised to see a US market EQE 350 Plus SUV achieve an EPA rating of about 290 miles, with the dual motor EQE 350 4Matic and EQE 500 4Matic achieving 250 miles or so. The EQE AMG SUV should be right on track with about 240 miles of range. Now here's a bit of fun for you. The Mercedes EQE SUV will actually launch in America before spreading to other markets, and that's because it's built in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, alongside the larger EQS SUV. It'll initially be available in four variants. There's the EQE 350 Plus, which has a single motor on the rear axle to give you the most range and bang for your buck. Then you can option it with 4MATIC all-wheel drive that adds a front axle mounted electric motor as well as a little bit extra torque. If you really want power though, you probably want to go for the EQE 500 that comes standard with 4MATIC all-wheel drive as well as upsized electric motors. But then of course there's the top dog Mercedes AMG EQE which gets more power and torque as well as those faster acceleration numbers that I told you about earlier courtesy of its unique high performance electric motors and inverters. We likely won't get pricing information for the EQE S SUV lineup until much closer to their market launch, with the standard car coming in the first or second quarter of next year and the AMG arriving a little bit later. You could probably expect to pay about 75 grand for a base model, whereas the top dog AMG could be up to 140 grand with every single option box ticked. Whatever it costs though, it's likely that Mercedes-Benz's EV devotees will find a lot to like in the EQE SUV, thanks to its nippy proportions and futuristic styling combined with a comfortable interior and plenty of technology that we've come to expect from the Mercedes EQ brand. I'm really excited to get behind the wheel of any of the EQE SUV variants. Obviously most excited for the AMG vehicle, and I can't wait to bring you more information as it comes out. But until then, thank you so much for watching.